Give me liberty and give me death. Uh, you got to pick one of those, okay? That's a great quote. I love that quote. Make what you will of it. Also, free giveaway time. I know that's why you're really here. Thanks for watching. Here's what we're giving away today. You can get free access to the Sexy Athlete Bundle. Who doesn't want to be a sexy athlete? Raise your hand. All right, turn off the channel, you guys. The rest of you, Sexy Athlete Bundle includes MAPS Aesthetic and MAPS Performance. You get both programs. It's the marriage of both programs, producing the baby that looks sexy and can move great. Would you like to be that baby? Here's what you got to do. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you underneath, and then you get free access to those two programs. Also, uh, we are still running a sale, although it's ending very shortly, on two very effective strength-building programs, right? Map Strong, Map Powerlift, both 50% off. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com, but don't forget to use the code August Special uh, with no space for that discount. All right, you freedom-loving fitness people, here comes the show. Is there something you both subscribe to where the dad jokes come from? Because you many times one of you will say one and the other guy knows it. happens it. naturally. You're already it's already happening with you, is little it, by little. I mean, yeah. it's just all new, Adam. Is you know, it's all gonna come I been a dad uh, long enough. later on. Yeah. yeah. Well, at, at some point, like you wake up and the dad's this is like this is like black. It's belt like it, dad. it's just in your DNA, dude. It, yeah. It's just, you know, epigenetically it gets expressed. Yeah. Know, to, to speak scientifically. <laughs> just wait till you start talking to your kid. You'll start dropping these jokes. And in your word new balance at some point. I haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. I mean, speaking that's of the that, natural we evolution. Will. Speaking of that, because uh, Roger Federer is is tied to your brand, Owen or whatever they, oh, they are. Right yeah, you're, I'm telling you, they're your, comfortable. Your bro. dad shoes there. They're they're super. They're, they're they're they they actually are? are going public today. Wow. So I believe it was today. I know this week they were going public. Well, so, so far, my all my my public choices of companies have crushed. Um, even the ones that you've picked that you didn't invest in that I did. I mean, weird. <laughs> you got to yeah. point that out. Crushed. That, one, <laughs> that one time. That one time I lost tens of thousands of dollars. I know. <laughs> hey, hey, I got to tell everybody. <sighs> Adam comes into work. He's like, dude, we have to invest in this company. It's freaking going to explode. And I'm like, you know what, dude? I'm like, I think you're right. So I did that day. Adam never did. Oh. And they were like at 70 bucks. I think they're like oh, 600 man. now. Yeah. Oh, weird. Some news report came out. That and, one uh, stings, man. That one stings. Uh, no. Did either one of you guys jump on the Weed Maps one afterwards? You guys no, I'm not. I'm keeping I'm, my... I'm slow to advice. I'm yeah. keeping... I'm, you know what? I'll, speaking of investments, uh, and by the way, I have a fructose study. I have a study that's on, on fructose and fat gain. So remind me don't, that I, I go to it. And those of you watching, tune in. Uh, keep watching. But um, I want to talk about one of the companies. So a lot of our audience doesn't know that we've now started investing in companies as early investors. Yeah. So this is just part of our strategy as Mind Pump for a couple of different reasons. One, we want to put our money where our mouth is. So when we see a company doing something that aligns with our values, integrity, we like what, and we, we want to be a part of it. Um, and also, of course, as, as investors, it's smart. And we invested in this company called Pathwater that makes, and this is actually quite brilliant, It's uh, these are reusable, refillable aluminum based bottles, but you buy the water and it costs like as much as a normal bottle of water. Yeah. So it's like fully recyclable and refillable. And they have all these like contracts with the schools and airports and stuff. So really yeah. interesting stuff. Yeah. You know, my kid's school uses these. They can white label oh, too. They, they are at his cool. school, huh? That's how, that's, that's how I, I recognized it because oh, my son's been using the same bottle now for like a year. And when I saw the arrow, I'm like, wait a minute, that's that they, they do it at my son's school too. Yeah, they're everywhere. Anyway, really cool. So um, fructose, they did a study on fructose showing that consuming fructose increases the gut's ability to absorb nutrients. Okay, so so increases the ability. Yeah, like positively. Right. So this is good or bad, right? Good if you need to increase your absorption of of calories. Let's say if you have maybe issues absorbing calories. Bad if you're dealing with obesity and stuff because it increases the amount of calories that you actually store and use. So this is one more kind of study that's tying fructose to issues with obesity, potentially. Hmm. And fructose is something that we consume a lot of now that, well, now that it's been a while now that uh, you look at like, uh, you know, drinks and foods that have added sugar. It's typically high fructose corn syrup. 
that's added to those things. Is it still that way? I thought that was slowly starting to shift. There Is seems it? to be a bit of a market for like real sugar again, but it's not like it used to be, dude. It's ever since we subsidized corn, it destroyed. A lot of people don't know this. There were big sugar markets in parts of the U.S., like in Hawaii. Hawaii used to grow, used to have these huge plantations of sugar cane. They were decimated when we started subsidizing corn because it became cheaper for us to process high fructose corn syrup than it was to make sugar. So, so is it just the high fructose corn syrup that's you know they're gauging the study off of, or because even from fruit, right? Like. You know what the you know what it is. I, don't, I know people will bring that up and be like, "Oh, fruit's not unhealthy," which is true. The amount of like fresh fruit that you would have to eat to equal the fructose. Oh uh, yeah, for concentration wise. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. the issue. Even with sugar, when was that statistic you brought up a long time ago? But like a, how like how many? Feet oh, of sugar six cane? feet. Six feet of sugar cane is what you'd have to chew. Six feet of sugar cane to equal like which what, is like the, bark. The amount of sugar that's in one one can of soda. Yeah. So I mean, sugar appears in nature, but it's really hard to find it in those uh, concentrations. Like, you know how hard it would be to find 50 grams of sugar in nature? I think yeah. the only, only well, way to do it is honey. Like, honey. What, what is it? Yeah, is that fructose. That right? would be the only way to do it, and then you'd have to fight bees <laughs> <laughs> and climb shit to get to it, you know? Do you guys know that we waste like 40% of our fruit? Do you know that? That we throw away almost uh, half yeah. of our fruit and I vegetables? I know it's a lot. I didn't know it was that high. I saw that Jackie sent over that article in that company. Did you guys see that? Uh, oh, appeal. Ap yeah, appeal. And I, I was reading that. They say they got like a two billion dollar valuation. Right, this company is like exploding right now, and they've come up with a plant based, like sounds like a, a spray that layers over the fruits and vegetables that increases its life expectancy by like double, and it it allows it to breathe oxygen to get in and out, but it, it holds in moisture. Yeah. And it's supposed to extend the life by double. Some and kind of sealed preservative? I don't, you know, what's weird. So I'm reading the article and I was telling Sal about this. And, you know, they say it's plant based, but. So is it, tobacco. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> plant based breathing <laughs> uh, alternative to vaping. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. and so I'm, I'm wondering how well, much of it oil, is like, genetically modified plants? in order, you know, what else is inside it. I know it's plant based, but what else is in it to be able to, to, to do That's that? That's a good question. And so that ma it makes me wonder, like, okay, well, because if it was organic and all natural, they would have said that in the article. Yeah. I mean, they would promote that for sure. Now, that being said, I'm pro it no matter what, because if we're throwing away half of our fruit and vegetables and there's people that are still starving, simply by extending the life by double, I would assume that we could cut that number in half, Dude, right? You bring up yeah. a great point. because First off, plant-based, arsenic is plant-based too. So that doesn't necessarily mean you're okay. So that's a good point. But the, a second point you made... A lot of people don't know this, but people think that that food production is the issue when it comes to feeding people. It's not. It's distribution. Yeah. It's markets. It's making them more efficient because we grow enough food. We actually throw away enough food to feed a lot of the starving people in the world. Like you said, 40% of fresh fruits and vegetables are thrown away. Right. And if you could minimize that, I mean, if, let's say we brought it down to you know 10%. The cost of food would drop uh, considerably, especially fresh foods. And the reason why processed foods are so cheap, part of the reason why they're so cheap is they don't have that issue, right? I could ship a box of Cheez-Its across the world and it could take a week. It could take months and it would be fine. Yeah. You can't do that with apples or you know tomatoes or anything like that. I thought I read a stat, and check me, Doug, on this because I don't know if this is right, that one in nine people uh, are starving. Is that that sounds so high? Mm. Is, is it, it world? Yeah, oh. worldwide. Mm. Is that true? You know that's gone down a lot. You no, know, I know it's gotten a lot Where's better. The worst countries now, I, I would wonder. The worst with starvation. Yeah, in terms of like yeah hunger problems. Well, guess, chi China really reduced their uh, starvation quite a bit in the 20th century. So that is probably accurate. Eight point nine percent. That's about eight. That's about nine percent, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. close. Now, now one in nine. You should see. You should look up. Wow, what percentage of people are below the whatever the? I forgot what this, the standard as was for poverty worldwide, but it dropped like eighty percent in the twentieth century. Like we made such a huge dent in that 
because of the opening up of markets. That's on that one website you always talk about, right? The um, uh, humanprogress.org. Human yeah. yeah. We'll talk about Great that. Great website. Huge uh, reduction. It used to be a big, big, big... Pr- it's the well, issue, well imagine... I mean, a company... I mean, that's why I think this company is going to do well, right? I mean, uh, regardless if it's GMO or not, if you could double the life expectancy of fruits and vegetables, we're throwing away 40%. 9% of the world is starving. I mean, you got to think that that's going to dramatically impact that. I mean, just by being able to preserve that and give it to them instead of throwing it away. So yep. be very interesting to see what, what kind of dent that can make. And I know I throw away. I, and, it, you know, Jessica and I talk about this all the time. We end up throwing away a lot because you'll buy it. Yeah. And unless you shop every day, which is another option, is to buy just what you eat that day, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But if you shop like, once or twice a week and, you know, get a bunch of asparagus and avocados and whatever in the fridge, you know, it's it, every week we I, go in there. Oh, get the asparagus. Oh, yeah. it went bad. Well, you especially if I take off like for a weekend or something, you yeah. know, it's just like, yeah, it gets, it gets bad. It I gets wonder if, if companies like Instacart have improved that though. Right. So like, I don't know about mm-hmm. you guys, but, um, ever, and it was after COVID that, cause we never used to really do the whole Instacart thing. I always used to go to the grocery store. Um, now it is very rare that we go to the grocery store and it's almost daily Katrina has stuff sent to the house. What's the what's the fee look like with that? I, I know obviously there's a fee. Yeah, there is, but I mean God, when you when you think about the time and gas that it costs to go do that, like the it's not I, I would have thought it was a lot more than what it really is. It's 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 really insignificant it it's is. not a big it's not a big number now mind you if you're somebody who is who is tracking every you know 50 cents to dollar you know that you spend extra and stuff like that then it's probably cheaper for mm-hmm. you to drive yourself the grocery store but when you factor in things like waste like that's one of the reasons why we do it so much now you just have it come yeah so we just buy little amounts of fruits and vegetables and and that way in the past you go to costco or you go places and like your your point you're bringing up is you buy in bulk and then oh so we changed one night we decided to go out to dinner and we changed our mind that, that was the night we were going to cook this meal and then now it's bad three days yeah. later or what you know what i'm saying so well we do this whole um you know from the local farms and they give you like options of what you know you can select in terms of uh, vegetables and fruit and eggs and bread and stuff like that and but it's just like you have to consume it because it, it'll it'll perish within a few days so we're just always like in this mad rush to kind of consume this stuff but uh the we were talking about this too since we're moving again i think we're gonna bring the chickens back oh wow oh yeah wasn't yeah, that I a pain think in the, the butt? chickens are coming back you know why it was a pain was because just um we wanted to get them out with more space because we want them to be more free range and they could go. Yeah, your property now is perfect out. for it. Yeah, I couldn't like contain it. You know, they were just all over the place, and I'd be chasing them in neighbors' yards, and uh, they, they would just take off. So now it's like we can have the, like a bigger kind of a, uh, a coop for them uh, and and be able to manage it better. Now, what about like because where you're going to be living, you're up in the hills or whatever the mountains. Aren't there going to be like Animals that will eat them. Mountain lions, coyotes, yeah. and yeah, even raccoons, I think. I don't, I don't know if they eat chickens. Yeah, but you not, put but them up at night, right? I mean, yeah, so. yeah, they'll go in there. Is that, oh, that's what you do? Yeah, you put them, you put them you in the house. You let them, roam, you let them roam early. Well, in there, put, yeah, and you their, close their, their hen, hen house. Oh, okay. Close the house, and then the outside has the, the cage around it. Or you get a badass rooster. Those things are vicious. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's it. Put some really? razor that's blades it. on him. I don't think the rooster saves yeah. you from a fox. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, we might just end up with a bunch of, you know, offed chickens in the morning. Actually, wasn't there that, is, uh, maybe I'm tripping. Isn't there like this breed of rooster that's huge? Am I tripping? Was there a rooster once that we saw in an article that was that was just like a uh, Do big, you know what the, I think like Rhode Island Reds are like one of the bigger, bigger, bigger ones. It was a big ass rooster. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, what and it was big, a bit, what are the biggest chickens? Done? Yeah, I don't know it's what a, what specific no uh, breed that is. Yeah. Now the rooster, when it lives with your chickens, he bangs them and shit all the time, right? Makes eggs and stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, that's we can't have. Yeah, I I don't know. I guess I don't know how that works because uh, I, what I've understood with that is like you ju- you want them to just be producing. So I don't know if the rooster helps that process or yeah, it starts no, to he's, fertilize the eggs. He's the one that fertilizes the eggs and then will turn it into babies. Yeah, like I don't want that part. Like eggs you cook, you don't want that. Oh, you, really? Yeah, yeah. 
That's Unless you clip his nuts or something. I don't well, know how that works. Well, I, mean, no, I don't he, think you clip first his nuts. <laughs> well, I mean, doesn't he... Okay, so I don't know anything about this. I'm just speculating. Oh, By the way, it's, big, it's called the Brahmas. That's a pretty big ass. That's a 30-inch tall... That's a big cock. That's a huge... That's, yeah, that's that a is huge, a ma- no, I'm talking massive about the, cock. I'm talking about the rooster. Yeah. Not the other thing <laughs> that Doug has up on the picture. No. Um, Brahma cock. So here's my speculation. So wouldn't the rooster be more likely to protect the hens if he's banging them? I mean, I feel like it, right? Based like, on my, what I've seen in animal behavior, I these are my girls. I don't think, though, he's much of a protector from the animals that kill chickens. You need a lot of roosters, huh? How many roosters would it take to stop a fox? Yeah, it would take um, a massive cock to be able to stop I a fox. Don't th- yeah, vicious yeah, cock. Yeah. I mean, a real <laughs> yeah. nasty one. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, love I just it. don't think it's going to work I out. Hey, so. yeah. I don't think so either. We're, we're 12, basically. Yeah, yeah. This whole yeah, conversation... Was- Extended so that we could say cock a few times. Yeah, yeah. you and, know, we, I, we, I got DMs of uh, well, the young the youngsters that follow and listen to us that were you know, teasing the shit out of me and us for the our uh, online dating conversation. Oh yeah. Like, oh my God, listen to you guys talk about online dates. Like, listen to my dad dorks. and his buddies talk about like, <laughs> aren't no, there, yeah. no clue on how it works. Yeah. Like, okay. Aren't there like tubes? Oh that no, the internet goes shame to? me. Yeah. And you got to yeah. push a button or something like that. I mean, how do you, how does it work? I remember one time, <laughs> this was a while yeah. ago. Yeah. I have brought this up a couple times. Talk Please. to a girl in person, be a man. Dude, I hope, I, I hope my dad never hears this, but he was, <laughs> he was back when my brother was living uh, there and my dad goes in there at, it was like, th- like 2 a.m., Knocks on my brother's door. My brother's like, what? And he goes, I need your help. And he goes, how do I take this off? And my dad had wrote in a comment on Facebook because he didn't know how to use search. You know, he's trying to search. And it said porn. <laughs> and he, <laughs> Literally just search the term. Yeah. Dad, that's Google. You're supposed to do that yeah. on, not Facebook. He's like, how do I take this off? <laughs> I mean, you're close, Dad. 2 a.m. Yeah. My brother's like, oh, shit. He's going to add a U in he, front of there. He called me up and he goes, dude, Dad, at the end. Dad woke me up at 2 a.m. to ask me how to take this off Facebook. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. How do I, how do I get oh, to the porn? Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, you know, that's I had funny. a great. This is a great conversation I want to have you you guys. So I was talking with uh, my kids on the way to school this morning, and we're talking about my son. I'm about to get him driving lessons because he just turned 16. He's got his permit, right? So he'll be driving soon. My daughter is going to turn 12 this year, and so she's like, oh, you know, know, it'll be cool when I drive. And I'm like, and then she's like, what it's going to be like when, you know, Aurelius, you know, my my nine-month-old, when he drives. I'm like, you know, I wonder if by that point, because that'll be 16 years from now, essentially, right? I wonder if self-driving cars will be the norm at that point and if it's really not going to be people getting too many driver's licenses. And then we were talking about what it's going to be like 30 years from now. And this is a just a brilliant uh, – my, my son said this. I thought this was absolutely brilliant. He goes, you know, in 30 years, we're going to be talking to – you know, our grandkids and our kids will be talking about how crazy we were – to drive around yeah. half ton machines yeah. under our control. Like, oh my God, can you believe grandpa used to drive around in yeah. this half ton killing machine with all well, these people driving their own? You, I thought that was such a good Did point. you see, so on, on Richard Branson's like Instagram, he showed the Hyperloop uh, that Virgin has come up with and like their prototype and everything. And so it's it's basically that high speed rail with which has uh, you know the frictionless like electromagnetic um, you know track where they have these pods that basically are like are high speed that they they're on tracks that are going to be oh wow they're they're planning on like moving that through all basically where you'd have freeways so you just step in and then it it uh, takes off yeah like super I, super are fast we, are, percentage wise are are more people living than dying? So per, not dollar or dollar, amount of people, but the percentage. Yeah. So as things get safer, okay, to what you're what you're alluding to right now, ha, over the last let's say four or five decades, has that dramatically dropped? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the but the population. So then what about overpopulation? Then? Well, no. That's okay. So that's a huge like everybody's like, oh my god. First of all, we have way more than enough resources, land, and whatever. Dude. It's but population growth has been shown in developed nations to slow down and then eventually stop. Yeah, has become as people sort of self regulates. But according to the Georgia Stones, we should be at uh, half a half a billion. Okay, what's what's worldwide? That? Okay, so what's, bring, a, what's so, a Georgia Stone? So this is weird. I didn't know about this. I don't yeah, know. The, it, it looks like uh, a Stonehenge. 
but it's in Georgia and people have had their own conspiracies around it of, of it being like sort of part of new world order stuff and you know the globalist uh, stuff out there but yeah it has all these like sort of guidelines for humanity uh, you know to achieve and so one of them was like maintaining a population of uh, 500 million well we already passed it's like, that up dude that's just I mean th those those are some major cities you know like around the world what are some of the other things on the Georgia Stones do you oh yeah pull those up Doug. so is, is it a mystery okay, is, yeah, it, it, some of them actually sound like feasible like they sound like good ideas and then they just like kind of cram in some uh, like everybody should there's going to be a new language. Uh, uh, there should be a new. I mean, I'm language so lost here. There. What, this is. Pull are you telling up. me it looks like? Is it looks like Stonehenge? Yeah. There's, and it, there's and stones that are there. carved in. With and how in. long has it been here? Like, has it been there a long time? Yeah, I, Doug, can you read off the? Yeah, list, huh? so <clears throat> they put it up there in 1979. I don't think they know who did it. Yeah. Uh, there's ten guidelines, eight uh, in eight modern languages, and four dead ones carved onto the slabs like babylonian and, right yeah so there's 10 of them the was, first one being okay. maintain humanity under a half a billion people in perpetual balance with nature second one is guide reproduction wisely improving fitness and diversity number three unite humanity with a living new language four rule passion faith tradition in all things with tempered reason number five protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts Number six, let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Mm. Number seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. <laughs> I'm behind that one. Yeah. Eight, balance personal rights with social duties. Nine, prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. And number 10, be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for for nature. This so sounds I can like see. this sounds like a couple. Is it nineteen seventy nine? Nineteen seventy nine. Couple college students getting couple high. Couple and they're like, dude, we should go create our own <laughs> Ten Commandments. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is a very expensive project, like. though. It's massive. It is. Oh, is it? I want to see it. I'm trying to get it's it up, but it's there, not Doug. casting. For it's some like a, so. Is it like Stonehenge size? Is that what? How big it is? Or uh, yeah, it, looks it looks like, like it. Yeah, it's like five or six huge slabs, and then one on top. There's a there's a lot of code in there. If so, it sounds good, but there's a lot of code that I could see why people would be like, uh, I don't know if it, I like this. It's under the, it's under the impression that everybody in the world has to subscribe to the same sort of ideas under the same language under the same mm -hmm. you know ruling. It's very much one world order. Yeah. So you know that's why. Oh wow, it's massive. Oh yeah, look at that. Wait a second. So this happened in 1979. And when we've got cameras is. and we've got all kinds of stuff and a project like that, which looks like it probably yeah. took months. And nobody and, knows who's and behind this. Big old cranes know. and things to get that up there, and nobody nobody knows. Well, my guess is they made them, carved them someplace else, and just brought them here and set them up. Yeah, yeah. but you don't know who did that. But why? Yeah, the I don't reason know. why. It's yeah, like it took a group know. of people, it's right? For unclear. Sure. That's kind of <clears> cool. It is kind of cool. Yeah, that is very interesting. Massive. Yeah, but I mean, what do you guys think about what you know, like that conversation I had with my kid about? Because if you think about it, that is a very um, that's a realistically. Well, a lot of people I, die. A lot of people die in car accidents. It's such a feasible thing to say. In, right. in, in thirty to forty years, it would. In looking back, you would one hundred percent be like, "Oh my gosh, people were crazy." Well, I don't think it's. I, I don't totally. think that's a weird conversation at all because you think our, our parents. It was very common practice to be on the freeway and be in the back of a pickup truck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like driving driving places or driving vehicles that have no seat belts. Like there's you, a lot of things that were well, Yeah, it, I mean what this pandemic has taught me is just you, all you got to do is hyper focus on one thing that could potentially kill you and everybody's going to freak out. Oh yeah, no. It, it, even if it's minuscule, it doesn't matter if it's like if uh, if slipping in the shower has killed somebody, like we could just focus on that. Dude, my grandfather you. who turned 90, right, recently, this is exactly what he says. He goes he goes, you know, everybody's so scared everybody so he goes man i i was 12 years old i used to climb i used to sneak on trains and i'd go to and have to sleep in other towns just to find ways to feed myself and help my family he's like i came to venezuela left your grandmother in sicily because we had no money i didn't know anybody over there went to a country where i didn't speak the language figured out how to make money to send it back. It goes, I slept on the floor with cockroaches and rats. 
And he's like, tuberculosis was all over the place. He goes, there was the, you, were the, you know, we had World War II. He goes, you know, I remember American soldiers, stay, you know, coming through Sicily to, you know, to, to go through Italy. And he goes, you know, it's, and he goes, and then my grandfather had it way worse and scarier than I did. And I'm like, yeah, you know, he makes a very good point. It's like we're so easily afraid. That doesn't mean that there isn't like validity in the stuff that might hurt us or whatever. It's definitely valid. Yeah. But what was it? Who is it? Winston Churchill. What did he say? There's nothing to fear but fear itself. And I, I think that there's a lot of truth uh, in that what statement. Are the, what are mm -hmm. the top five to ten ways people die that right are now? not related to health? That aren't like cancer, like oh, I see. like car accidents, car accidents uh, sure. murders, like falling off a cliff, like what are suicide? Like what are the top five to ten ways people die uh, that are not health related? Do you think, have any idea? I think car accidents has got to be one of the well, top, it's be the especially highest. if you're young. If you're a young driver, it's pretty bad. It's a pretty uh, it's a it's a top killer. Suicide is now pretty. Oh, sorry, Franklin D. Roosevelt said that. Can't believe I got that wrong. But anyway, that's uh, uh I, you know I believe that. Well, that I want to see my thing, Doug. Can you find that? How people the top top ten ways non non health related people die? Oh, you just look up the top the top top twenty ways people die, and then we can see. Well, I, I have a feeling ten of them are going to be health of at course. least. You know, you're yeah. going to get your cancer, obesity, heart disease. Heart disease all the, is going to be a big yeah. Problem. You're going to have all those. Yeah, wow, so. look at that. So it's, it goes accidents, stroke. So accidents is three. So one hundred and sixty thousand. Deaths a year. See, all care. the rest are all health related. So everything I else. I is want to see. I want to see things that like that we. And why I'm asking is because I'm trying to think of. Obviously, that would be a uh, huge. Yeah, accidents. Wow, it's number three. That's a big one. Yeah. Again, especially if you're if you're young when you're driving, but I'm sure that they count other accidents too, like falling off of a uh, a ladder or right. You know, suicides up there. Suicide number ten. Suicide's gone up a lot. Recently, I don't know if you guys knew that. What is, what yeah. is that? Septicemia is that? Septic? When, yeah, Se septus. I think. Yes, yeah, so when you get septic. So like you like a bacteria. Uh, blood poisoning. Blood yeah. poisoning. Oh wow! Yeah, overcomes your body. Chronic liver disease is number twelve. I mean, you know, and it's funny again <clears throat> having this conversation with my son that led us to talk about you know fear and all that stuff, and I said, you know. Our ancestors had to make crazy decisions. Like they had to, they were, they'd had to ask themselves, all right, like here's our choices. Either we stay here and starve, or mm -hmm. I go out of the cave where all the sable tooth lions are. And even the animal I'm going to try and kill might kill me. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I got to make that choice, or we stay in here and then we're 100% guaranteed, you know, to die. And then, you know, we talked more about fear. And I said, you know, it's weird. But when people are scared, we, allow some of the craziest laws well the truth and stuff is those, those type of decisions yeah. are so easy though it's survive or don't survive where it's so much more nuanced today they are options i mean your your point uh, i get it where you're going with it but it's so different like today like well, so I, we so have so many luxuries today that we have i mean even we talked about this the other day like just the fact that you have the option to be a vegan mm -hmm. is a a total luxury that we you didn't have 300 years ago no so and and so when you have these these people that get all scared and then you make a point like oh the decisions that we made that were way scarier back then well they also didn't have all the well, options here I'll make it more recent okay uh, all of us were we were all in our twenties when September 11th happened and I vividly remember the fear that yeah. was spread across uh, the country and the free world and that led us to invading a country that had nothing to do with September 11th so we got into war with Iraq. We occupied a country, Afghanistan, we, and we just recently left, so we were there for decades. Yep. We passed the Patriot Act, which literally says they could read your shit, go through your stuff, spy on you with no warrant. Mm -hmm. We passed Non-Defense Authorization Act, which allows them to jail you indefinitely yeah. without, without just any- Just by labeling you a terrorist, yeah, that, like without any no courts court. involved. So, and, and because we were afraid, we were scared of terrorists. And, they, and this is what happens when we get scared we let sh that people do stuff and pass things that we normally wouldn't all under the guise of oh it's going to keep us safe well, that's but all almost political doesn't. strategy right i mean what's that Dude, other what's that saying don't let, think let a, ahead a good how a crisis go to waste or whatever totally yeah, yeah i mean totally. that's what that is yeah that's, it's a 100 percent. follow so the money that's why we got to be careful because it's easy and look i tell you what historically it, the freer nations that protect people's liberties so freer means more risks and stuff right 
they fare better. People yep. live better. They tend to not get killed as often. They tend to be safer. So this false like belief that if we just you know control more people and pass more crazy laws, we'll be safer. It doesn't work that way. I mean, you know, you could live in a, a country with crazy laws. There's a lot of them that exist in the world. You're not going to be safer. I could tell you that much no. right now uh, than you will be probably uh, in you know more free places. Done with my rant. I'll yeah, tell you. I told you guys. I'll tell you something that was scary that happened to me last night. When was the last time that you guys had like a limb fall asleep, and it fell asleep <laughs> so bad that it took like two minutes oh, for the blood uh, to get back in there and you feel it? That happened so, to my arm. So you, I mean, I talked the other day about how I've got the you know the long COVID thing going on where yeah. I'm like just exhausted and I'm I have like shortness of breath and so my. Um, my my best friend, his wife is a, a respiratory therapist, right? And so she's given me all the all these different advices. Well, one of the things she tells me to do is to sleep on my stomach, and I sleep, I'm a I'm a back sleeper, so I never sleep on my stomach. I just can't. So I'm like trying to do it. I, part of it too is I don't know if it's my my feet are so big that when I lay flat, it like hurts my ankles. So I gotta hang my feet <laughs> hang off your the feet over the yeah bed. off yeah. the bed like so. No, put a pillow under your ankles. So or that or yeah shoes, yeah, yeah or that. But then that kind of like arches my low back and it doesn't feel as comfortable. So the put move is pillow to hang, under your tummy. Yeah, you start looking like a pregnant woman. <laughs> sexy yeah. look, yeah. So anyway, so I'm like trying to do that, right? So I, because I, Katrina told me the other night, I was like whistling while I was breathing, and it, it woke woke her up, woke me up. So I'm like trying to fall. I fell asleep on my stomach, and I fell asleep with my arm and my shoulder underneath, bro. And I, you know, I I, I wake up in the middle of the night. And I, I can't move it at all because it's completely asleep. So I got to use the other arm to push and roll over. And remember, it's okay. It's like two in the morning. It's pitch black. Just flopping. So I, I roll hard. And when I roll hard, it's so limp and I can't feel it. It slaps me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and then I freak out because all I can't see anything. I can't feel it. And all of a sudden, I feel something slapping me in the face. And my other arm is swimming. And I, I have no idea how Katrina didn't wake up in the middle of the night because I freaked the fuck out, dude. Because I, I feel this thing hit me in the face. I don't know, realize what it is until I grab it with the other hand and throw it off. And then when I go to throw it off, because I have no control, I hyperextend my elbow. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bro. When that happens, it was you like a use disaster it, for that's like ten stranger. minutes. That's am, the, I, am I right? That's, that's, the, that's the real stranger. That's the stranger. Yeah. You oh, missed out. It's, oh, a, it's a technique. You had two minutes of a stranger. But I, it hasn't. Yeah. So I've had. You know, you have little out. times where your hand falls asleep like this. But I mean, it was so bad that like I've after, done that before. It was like took like two minutes. There's a little bit of fear that creeps Dude, in. I've done that before. Is it going to come back? I've done that before, and I had to pick up my arm with my other arm yeah. in order to move it it is a creepy it especially a, when you're half asleep and you're just yeah it, especially yeah. when you're half asleep right yeah and then I it's did this dude and when i threw it, it i had no control so it whack and the hyper extended it hurt so bad oh, <laughs> like, dude. You know, i don't know how katrina did that yeah, so that happened to me years ago and and i picked up my arm and then dropped it and i hit my my ex-wife with my hand and she's like wow what would happen I'm like no it was my my hand fell asleep that was my excuse at least yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's your excuse. I was just thinking all night, like, oh. You know yeah. what I'll tell her? I'll tell her I fell asleep. Ah, yeah. oh, it's my arm. It's weird. Yeah, back no. to uh, kind of you, you brought up uh, uh, wars and whatnot. Like, so I found a fun fact that I'm a big Star Wars geek and I did not know this. Um, when they were filming A New Hope uh, back in the day, uh, they're filling in. Tun Tunisia. I don't know how to pronounce uh, the country. Tunisia. Tunisia. Uh, okay. and, um, so it's like all desert and it's basically where, uh, they had, um, the, the sand crawler. So the sand crawler was there with the Jawas, the Jawas oh, right. were, yeah. So that was that whole scene where it was kind of like crawling in the desert. It's this big, like military looking object that was going. So apparently they're doing it near the border of Libya and it almost started a war. <laughs> Uh, because they were like, like thinking that they're mobilizing their military. And so like George Lucas was like, you know, had to, <laughs> had to like, this was on new hope. Which one's new hope? It's the, the very the, first one that they released number four, one. but the, yeah. 
Okay, wait, no. So it's the, in, in the timeline. It's number four, but it's the first one they released. The yeah. first new one they released, no. not the just, one, very just, first Star Wars. You, they, thank you. Oh. You yes. just confused the shit out of. Adam. Yeah, he, I know. well, don't tell me that wasn't confusing well, when he just said that. Well, it's because you know, it was the first one they released. Number four. I gotta four. be accurate, dude. <laughs> well, well, okay. this is, that's because the very first Star Wars is actually it just number jumps four. Jumps you in because they did three prequels later on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in the timeline of movies, it's number four, but it's the one with the original one, right, with Luke Skywalker. Okay. Yeah. The very first one ever produced is this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Probably how I would say. It. How <laughs> epic would that have been? He starts a whole war over this like it fake would be epic. sci-fi that would be movie. Crazy. <laughs> He's like, keep the cameras rolling. Yeah, let's go. This Real is, firepower. It's. Uh, I, I watched. Uh, reminds me. I watched Tropic Thunder with my son because you know, you know, in that <laughs> movie. A, I love that movie, movie so much. Dude, so you know what's funny? So I'm watching uh, this with my son. And so inappropriate. I so, love it. Yeah. Okay. And my son's obviously he's 16, right? And we're watching it, and he goes. Did he just put on blackface? I'm oh, like, he did. Yeah. And he's the only actor that never got canceled over it. Like Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. legit did blackface in that movie. Yeah. And I, maybe because it's a comedy, I don't know, but nobody ever gave him any shit over it. And it wasn't that long ago. How old is the movie? Like uh, five yeah. years ago? They yeah. talked about it a little bit when he was on yeah, uh, it, it Joe did, Rogan's it got, podcast. Yeah, it, got, it did get a little bit of controversy, but it didn't go very, it didn't no. go very far. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that's a good question. I don't know why it didn't I mean, get it was all much. satire, obviously, but maybe then, I don't yeah, know. But still, I don't know how he made it through. Yeah, because everybody else got completely lambasted. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I mean, who knows? They don't, there's no, like, That was right after he was making his comeback, too. Wasn't that one of his first two that when he got back? What was I, his first one? Iron Man. Iron Man. That was his first one back? Yeah. yeah. He did Iron Man and then, and then he did, Thunder, like, right? Sherlock so. Holmes and, yeah. And that came did. later, I think, yeah? Yeah, well, yeah, I think after Tropic Thunder. Yeah, Tropic Thunder, Thunder was, like, one, at least one of his first two or three when he first yeah. got back, you, so. You know who was brilliant in Tropic Thunder? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant? Tom Cruise. Kill him. This is the last horseman. Who is this? This is Flaming Dragon. Oh, okay. Flaming Dragon. Fuck face. First, take a big step back and literally fuck your own face! That oh, character yeah. that he plays? Oh, yeah. So good. He should do more comedies, dude. He was he was a natural. Oh, we were yeah. we were on the ground, my son. He doesn't was... have a lot of comedies, huh? No. No, that's he a, does all the action movies. That's a really good point. I'm trying... All the movies Tom Cruise has been, I, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head that he's a, uh, he does a, like a, you know, satire role or whatever. Arguably what? his best it, role. I would say the second He was closest. hilarious. It yeah. was good. It yeah. was so, it was brilliant. And the second, his second best role, I'll say, was Born on the Fourth of July, uh. I think would, was pretty good. And then what's your favorite movie, that one that you talk about know, all the time? I don't know that. What's what, Born on the Fourth of July? Yeah, you know, you like never seen name? that? No. Oh, yeah. yeah that's no, a good I like one. Top Gun. I mean, that's, 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 that's heavy. Where I'm at. What's yeah. your, what's that movie you talk about all the time that you love? Few Good Men. Okay, that I think that was one of his best for really? sure. Yeah, that the firm. Oh, okay, the both those two are really. But oh, those are all serious. Mm. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to rack my brain around. I can't believe he hasn't done a, a too many comedies. No, no, no. He that must be intentional, right? That you got to be. You want to be the serious guy, and you must tell your agent like, I don't want to take any funny movies. Yeah, I'm know. a serious guy. Did you know yeah, Robert actor. Downey Go Jr. got uh, nominated for best supporting actor for his role in? Tropic Thunder. Wow. Dude. That, isn't that just like the opposite you would imagine? Pick and choose, man. It's a pick and choose. That was a different off. world back then, too. It, not that long ago. And you know what? There's yeah. no, listen, the cancel mob, there's no statute of limitations. Like, oh, they, yeah. They could have go easily back. gone back and I be know. like, you're canceled because there's probably a reason behind why they didn't. I bet you could yeah. look it up because oh, it is it is strange they didn't. If he comes out and says a particular political stance, I guarantee yeah, you. Yeah, that's probably what it is. He's probably just, yeah, able to. St- to move right past it you know, just because he hasn't been super uh, political about anything they disagree with. Very smart. Yeah. Very smart business. Anyway, uh, speaking of smart business, did you guys crack open your uh, gold juice, your pumpkin spice? Oh, no, I haven't opened it up yet. Did you oh, take it last night? So good. Dude. We, I know we did got you made in. your lattes yet. That's how I like to dude, use it. Dude, warm almond Stock milk. Stock up. It's gonna, we're going to sell out. They always sell out. Always. Warm almond milk. You mix it in there. Oh, man. Did that you put is. your little Ugg boots on too? No, I didn't. <laughs> He had a shawl. I just, I just pictured. He these. actually bought a shawl. <laughs> I, I have, <laughs> I have big around. fluffy socks. Yeah. So who, is, hey, who is most likely to wear UGG boots in here? Uh, out of us? Yeah, you. You, dude. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I would not wear a. Hey, yeah, you're the just bougiest I'm one of all shoes of us. or fashion. Or, yeah, but I would not wear UGG <laughs> boots. Listen, dude. Listen, yeah, but Sal like would do it, and Sal would make really he would make the argument that <laughs> dude, these things are fucking here, comfortable. Guys. I mean, he'd make a scientific these, back study behind would, it for he sure. He would do it because he would back up yeah. how comfortable they are. No, okay. I would not, and here's why. Okay. How much does a pair of UGG boots cost? 
Oh, yeah, they are. Okay, yeah. so I'd probably get like Pug or some like yeah, knockoff so, brand. <laughs> even worse. <laughs> even worse. You would wear a generic Made brand from of real Pugs. That's, you would, that's yeah. a good point. You're right. You wouldn't spend $100, but you would spend 20 yep. And yeah. if they look just like it, you're like, whatever. Yeah, I They're would comfortable. Come, you know it. I'd come in here and be like, dude, they feel exactly yes, the same. Yes, you would. I don't give a That's shit. a great point. You yeah, would like, not, you would not spend not made $100. With, on what's it. the fur that they use? Is it, is it uh, what do they call it? Alpa- alpaca fur? Oh, right. No, this is bison fur, bro. It's even better. I wonder. I wonder if uh, Britney Spears gets like royalties for that. I mean, she literally put them on the map. If, if it wasn't for her, I don't even know if it would have been. I that bought true. my wife a pair. Oh, that's where it came from. She, I didn't know. Oh, Katrina loves them. She's got like three or four pairs. Yeah, she, really? Yeah, yeah. That's like her. She doesn't wear them out. Uh, at least not anymore. Maybe she did like. Ten years ago or whatever, but she loves. They're comfortable. They're easy to yeah. slide in and out of. She keeps. She I, mean, loves I like them. those slippers that have that same feel. You know, yeah. that's about do as you guys, fancy as I get. Do you guys wear shoes in the house, or do you guys walk around? Like, do you take your shoes off when you come in? I take them off, but if it's cold, I'll put some slippers on. Yeah, you do yeah, wear like no slippers. shoes. Yeah, no I like shoes. my slippers. No my shoes, right? Yeah, cold, no dude. Shoes. Yeah, me neither. You know, I grew up wearing shoes in the house. That's oh, how you I, did? I did. We always wore shoes in the house, and um, and I had a friend that always took their shoes off. I thought they were weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I remember we, you know, he brought it up. Well, I brought it up once because we were good friends. So I tease him about it. And he goes, dude, you walk around in public bathrooms, outside, all over the freaking place. Then you walk around in your house. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. So then that was it. I stopped wearing shoes in the house. Yeah, I just mm. think it keeps it down, especially if you have light colors. Like, so my house is all, you know, light gray and white. And yeah, you track so, all the yeah, so, crap in there. Now, what do you do when you have guests over? You make them take their shoes off? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I normally ask my guests to take them off. We yeah, have now, a sign at the door that says shoes yeah. off. Same here. Yeah. Now, have you guys had this happen where I'll tell somebody to take their shoes off? Oh, you know, please take your shoes off or whatever. And then I see the look on their face. They're like, oh, fuck. Like I got, this motherfucker. I got fucked up socks on or something. Has <laughs> 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 that happened? I got a hole in my big toe. Dude, that uh, happened. Uh, I had a buddy over, and I'm like, oh, you got to take your shoes off. And <laughs> him and, 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 and you look I at normally don't make a big deal. About, I do make a big deal at our Chucky house, though, because it's mm. ours. Yeah. Because it's our, all of ours. So we're respectful. I'm way more or anal about it. Someone walks in and they do that, mm-hmm. I get hella pissed. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's at my house, and like I, the sign's there, I'm not in him. Like I, I just kind of expect you to pick up on Dude, it. That happened to me when I was uh, in security to get through uh, baggage or whatever for like at the airport. Hit the holy socks. I out. had I had a big hole uh, on one of them, and they're <laughs> two different socks, you know. And I'm just like, whatever. It was like early, and I just put them on. And I, your big I ass toe. Like, oh no, dude! It was so bad. My two toes are sticking out, and like one, <laughs> this is like short here, and then long here. I'm like I must look like a like a that's a bum. big pet peeve of Katrina. Ugh. She always gets on to me if I have a like even the small. She as soon as it gets a small hole, she'll throw them away. Really? And, I, and I'm like, you can't throw them away until you replace them. That's the yeah. deal. Yeah, you got to let me at least rock them until you get another package behind them. What now? What? Okay, you said you're anal about something. Jessica used that term the other day too. I want to know the roots of that. Anal, <laughs> anal retentive. Right, right, but what? Okay, uh, so what anal, is that? So you're, like puckers. you're tight, like it's tight, like puckers, tight fit, hole. Like you're so tight, you couldn't like that saying. You're so tight, you couldn't fit a grease BB up your ass. Wow, I think uh, it comes from Freud. Really? Like, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, anal what? retentive. Right? Is that yeah. is that where it comes from? Okay, is that okay? Now I thought it meant that there was a Anything condition. Sexual is Freudian. It's uh, no, everything. It's a, no, you're right. It, I thought it meant that somebody who doesn't they hold their poop for as long as possible. <laughs> yeah. Not something else. And I <laughs> thought so, that's what it was. No, it's oh, I'm not gonna let it go. Am I tripping? Yeah, that's something else. All right, maybe yeah. Doug. Can, yeah. Let's let's yeah, clear let's, this up. Let's, let's you walk around like you got to stick up it. Oh, wow, look at this. Energy and underindulged during the period. Time. I knew it. Perhaps. Freud p- posited that children who experience conflicts in which libido energy is underindulged during this period of time, and the child is perhaps too strongly chastised for toilet training accidents, may develop anal retentive fixations or personality Okay, traits. wait, so break that down. So, I mean, I knew it was anal retentive is the, where it came from. So anal retentive means that they're trying to hold their poop? Yes. Oh, they, interesting. They just won't go to the bathroom. That I didn't know. Yeah. So, I did not know So that. you're anal, right? Because you hold in your mm. poop the whole time. Yeah, let it go. You know? <laughs> let that let that out. God, how much how much of our stuff comes from Freud, dude, that you don't even realize? Everything's about sex with him. Yeah, though. I mean, yeah. I well, I and don't it's like, it's about it's your like, mom. It's it's all it's like dude, come on. He must have been Well, weird. it's not yeah. like a lot not all of it's been disproved. I know he's had some things that have been disproved and evolved. There's a lot of things that still hold true that he, do, you, do you guys know Freud did cocaine Oedipus all the time? complex and all that? To all those guys did drugs. Yeah, but Freud was a big cokehead. Like uh, like yeah. like wrote about it. Like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh, well, really? that used to be that used to be like uh, prescribed. 
you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, for a lot of uh, yeah. You know what ailments. else? Was, you know what else was prescribed? Uh, Coke was prescribed. Yeah. yeah, you didn't know that. I didn't know that. Coke and heroin. Mm -hmm. Heroin, I knew because it's an opiate, so I knew it was like a pain thing. Oh right? yeah. So that's what lot of laudium or laudum came from, right? Uh, is it lot? Lo is Doug? Come on. You should, <laughs> yeah, come on. I'm not so good with it. my opium but, stuff. Is it, it yeah, laudum or laudium? I, I don't know uh, about that, but I do. Saying it wrong. Anymore. I do know that you used to be able to go to a pharmacy, and you could get a bottle of something, and it would have cocaine in it or well, and heroin. oxycontin is basically a pill form of heroin yeah so it's just time release yeah 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 so you know i know that so you guys know but i didn't know coke i because I, I did what what is it for use for it would energy it would, <laughs> yeah yeah i get that part it would but, mood elevation but I mean, when you come uh, to the doctor pain like, yeah, yeah like uh anything kind of discomfort they're, they're oh it does have numbing properties huh numbing properties uh -huh. uh. Yeah. and uh methamphetamines were originally sold you ready for this to housewives oh yeah Put some pep in your step. Pep in that's, your step. That's yeah, what I remember the, that campaign. That's what the ads. What do you mean? You remember it? You remember I remember it because I seen a, like you, all those ridiculous ads. Yeah. Like when you go back and look at nostalgia. <laughs> yeah. It's not he's, like he's, I lived he's, through he's, it he's like from Doug. The 50s, bro, yeah, he's mean, still he's stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's called laudanum. Yeah, yeah, a go. mixture of opium and alcohol. Wow, you know what? Let me tell you something right now. Once every 500 episodes, Adam knows some random shit. <laughs> Shut up, that is really good. Yeah. That's old, too. That's from That's a hard word, too. Uh, I'm, pr I'm proud uh, of you. That's really good, dude. Yeah. You don't have the uh, the long COVID brain fog. Uh, no. That, that's I working know. good. I don't know. I don't know. That's yeah. working real good. A real random so do you guys know what the origins of vibrators are? Yes. yes. I brought Hysteria. this up on the show a long time ago. Did you? I shared a meme mm -hmm. on it like four or five years ago. It was for... Women's hysteria. Yep. Is that what it was for? Yep. I found there's actually advertisements for it. Hey, it's hilarious. So, so think about, okay, how fucked up it was, but also... Well, also, ladies, brilliant. This was a good time, right? Yeah. So women, they used to have a, a medical condition that they said women would suffer from called hysteria, right? That's where the word hysterical comes from. It's like from. anxiety and stuff, right? That's what it's, they use it for, I think right? it's just back then you had 12 kids and you had <laughs> You're to losing wash, your mind yeah. because like they're just driving you crazy. Come on, dude. You yeah. had to wash your clothes by hand. You had to- you know, kill, Life was really hard. Your food I mean, by scratch. Your husband was probably Maybe, maybe one asshole. of the smartest things they did back right. then. Yeah. And so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so all of a sudden there's this uptick in women saying they have hysteria. Where are you going, honey? I go to the doctor to treat my hysteria I'm and so then hysterical today and he would come give back, her an orgasm so good <laughs> oh i feel whew, i might tell you man i feel so much better relief <laughs> dr smith really fixed my hysteria but it only lasts 24 hours i gotta go back yeah. tomorrow <laughs> and, uh, yeah yeah where the doctors you know sort of uh you know guiding them with that <laughs> yeah that's why was know. that yeah there it is i've seen this i've seen those right there wow. give it give it to her give it you know what <laughs> yeah. oh, so what it says what I, was the what was the year Oh, those are. This is not when women they use it. This is these are ads for the massagers that they didn't advertise as like sexual tools. Yeah. She's rubbing it on her neck. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. right here. Yeah. <laughs> this penis shaped vibrator yeah. is great for neck Ooh, right massage. Right on my neck. <laughs> that's so what this is later. For. So this is after it's been used. So that's sixty. So what is probably the forties and fifties that it was being uh, no, prescribed? No, women were not being masturbated in the forties and fifties by dogs. It was it was the early nineteen hundreds or yeah, but when they first started doing that. Yeah, and they were like, so when, so when did the, so when did it hit the, was what I'm trying to get at was okay, it was being prescribed. You're saying in the early 1900s, and then because of probably all the relief that it gave women, it made its way to over the counter. Like, no, I think I think that people were like, hold on a second, you're, this is not, this is yeah, <laughs> you're giving my wife an orgasm. Intended uses here. So doctors stopped doing it, but that's the original vibrator right there on the on the bottom left. Yeah, I mean, look at that that thing. I think it's probably strong. My God. Wonder how many uh, <laughs> what the what the power is on that, but anyway, yeah. I want to know the uh, I want to know how it went from being prescribed. Do you think there was a gap where there was like all of a sudden? So it was doctors were using it. Then you your theory is that they go, okay, this is not legit. Yep. So they stop. It goes. It's out of no one's using it and now. Then, and then what they did is they marketed as a massager. Mm -hmm. So and if you look at the ads, like you know Doug was scrolling through the ads, a woman's like holding it on her neck or on her back, like ah. Oh, so much relief after a tough day. And then it was up to the consumer. So imagine imagine right. that socially, like the, that transition, yeah. how funny that is. Like, Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Hold on a second. Oh, how wow. old are these cartoons? This is- uh, Well, this is 200 AD. He's really inspecting down and there. It's called the genital massage. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. so so yeah, the, the doctor is teaching. Wow, the look technique. at that. 1650s. 
Just um, just imagine like the the evolution of socially like back then. when it first started like there had to have been like large percentage of, of women that were if you were getting advertised it as like a massager like that were getting in they're like oh this is so great you know sitting around and that's actually how they were just using it and then one of their girlfriends like hey you know if you put that on your vagina it feels way better right um, <laughs> it's like yeah. you know it had to have been like that if they didn't go and they weren't talking about it oh totally <laughs> or accidentally she yeah. she's like oh my leg is so huh yeah. oh what's going on here it's like oh the different settings on the shower head you know. Like it's one, but you know, good stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. Look, if you like the information that we provide, if you want to support us, here's all you got to do: subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. It really helps us out on YouTube, get to more people, so more people could get fit and healthy and have fun the right way. Because Mind Pump does everything right. So again, subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications. Thank you very much. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from George Sammy Lambro. Can you combine body weight and weightlifting workouts? Yeah, absolutely. It's all resistance training. You know, the the typically exercises done with weights uh, or machines or what are known as open chain exercises, meaning you're moving the limb and the body is stationary, right? So a bench press would be open chain. Closed chain would be a push-up, right? Because I'm moving my body away from my hands in a push-up. And they both have their benefits. These body weight movements give you really good, obviously, body control, body awareness, and a type of strength that translates really, really well to the real world. You know, free weight strength, machine strength, that also translates to the real world but typically not in the same uh, way. Now, let's think of some of the best free weight exercises that you could do, right? A barbell squat. A barbell squat is actually a closed chain. It's a loaded uh, body weight exercise because if you take the bar off your back, you're just doing standing squats. Uh, Pull-ups, another great exercise, right? Dips, another great exercise. So yeah, it's all resistance training. You can, you can even throw in bands in there and other... Anything that provides resistance, so long as it's done in a way to build muscle, can be put in a routine. So we we wrote programs that kind of separate this, right? Maps Anywhere is like a full body weight type of a program. There's bands involved, but mostly body weight. And then like when you look at Maps Anabolic, it's traditionally all, you know, basic resistance training program. But the truth is most of my lifting career, um, I would I actually blended these. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and a, a lot of it just had to do with like how I felt like I always felt like, uh, doing body weight exercises was good. If I kind of like pushed it too far with weights, like the, the previous day, or let's say I'm in a hotel and I'm limited to the, the equipment that they have. And so I kind of would, use, I would on the fly, very similar to how I intermittently use hit style training. It's just, I think it's another tool in your tool belt. And I think there's nothing wrong with combining it with half your exercises or traditional weight training. And then the other half is body weight. Or if you're doing supersets, I used to love to do like, you know, a dumbbell or barbell exercise and then go to a body weight exercise right after that. I love doing stuff like that. Like I do like a, a, a close grip bench press or skull crushers with barbells or dumbbell and then go right down on the ground and do, yeah. you know, close grip pushups, you know, and keep your elbows real tight for your triceps. Like I love doing stuff like that. And a lot of my training, I think has always looked at that, even though we didn't write a lot of the programs that way. Cause I think when we wrote programs, we were always thinking of not only one of the best ways to program, but also for teaching purposes. Like, so we would separate a lot of those things, but this is also what we encourage people that have gone through most of our programs is there's nothing that says you can't intertwine a lot of the the different uh, philosophies in each one of them and and do it that way. You don't have to yeah. follow it to a T every time. Same. I, I, oh, I used to love combining them for supersets. Well, I just like what I like about body weight training is it just keeps you connected to your body. Like a lot of times we get outside of our body. Totally. Um, and don't realize it. And we're just sort of like going through the, the motions and we're, you know, utilizing momentum and, um, you know, we're not really being as intentional as possible. And, and body weight training like exposes a lot of that. Uh, and, and it is a little more challenging because you have to get creative sometimes to make them more difficult, uh, you, you know, in terms of like um, using angles and gravitational forces and, and such. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so if, if in terms of like adding more stress and load, you know, weights are superior for that. But in terms of uh, being reconnected to your body and being able to brace and, and and protect your joints, and you know, there's just so much value in body weight training that you need to keep that within your programming as much as possible. Yeah, well, well look, let's compare two exercises that are similar in terms of the motion but one being body weight, one being uh, not body weight, right? So compare, for example, a pull-up to a lat pull-down. It's the same, similar, I should say, biomechanics, but let me tell you, you get really strong on a pull-up, it feels very different than when you get really strong on a lat pull-down. Think of another combination uh, or, or comparison, right? Overhead press or handstand push-ups, right? They both have their value, but they both feel very, very different. Like you get really good at handstand pushups, you have a whole different level of control and stability and athleticism. And I'll venture to say that probably the most athletic, resistance trained athletes that you'll find, and when I say athletic, I mean just general athleticism can do a lot of different things and display strength in a lot of different ways, has to be gymnasts, have to be near the top. And gymnasts, do use some weights, but mostly what they do is heavy resistance training, body weight based exercises. And I've worked out with gymnasts. I've had gymnasts that have worked for me. I've trained gymnasts and you bring them in the gym and you teach them a barbell or dumbbell exercise. They get good at it real fast and they get, they're strong like right out the gates. It's very, now they're not as strong as a power lifter or but the strength that they display for their body weight is just remarkable. So it's tremendous value in body weight exercises. And yeah, throw them in your, your, your workouts. Mix them up. Absolutely. Next question is from More Life Jojo. Does the intensity of the squeeze or clenching of a muscle matter? Big yeah, time. Definitely. Big time. Your intrinsic uh, application of intensity, right? So how hard you squeeze the muscle increases the intensity just like adding weight uh, to the bar would makes a big difference. Isometrics are depending on your intensity of contraction. Uh, if I flex a muscle, I can flex it, you know, have good control, or I can really flex it hard. And the harder I flex it, the more, the louder the signal, the more potential damage, all that stuff. So this makes a huge difference. One way you can apply this to your training. Well, there's two ways. One is to do isometric training in your workout, or two is focus on the squeeze at the top of a movement and really squeeze the muscle hard. But I will warn you, you're going to have to go lighter to do this. You fatigue real fast when you do this. It's not as easy as it sounds. It definitely makes it a lot harder. Well, wouldn't, it, wouldn't a simpler way to kind of explain this be like if I were to clench my fist very lightly, right? So I just, I'm squeezing my arm right now. My brain is firing neurons to my hand right now to, to in order to do that. And let's just say for this example, a hundred of them are being fired right. in order to do that. And then just by me simply clenching down as hard as I can, I now recruit even more from my brain to there in order yeah. to do and that. more muscle fibers. Right. So the and I and I'm also training that connection, a stronger, more uh more neuro neurological connection to to my fist. And if that is training like I loved your analogy that you used to give on the podcast all the time, which is comparing it to like an amp. Right, so your 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 central nervous system is like an amplifier to the speakers. Your speaker, the muscles are the speakers, and so you training that amplifier, you're getting a a, a higher wattage, a stronger amplifier. Mm -hmm. The better, the better and stronger it can get, the better that you can recruit muscle, and the l l more likely you are to lift more weight. And that goes back to the last question with like gymnasts. Part of the reason why they're so good is they have great. Uh, CNS control. I mean, they have, to, they have all that body weight training has connected them to their body so well. So they have incredible amplifiers. Maybe they didn't have big muscles yet because they haven't lifted hundreds and fi huge squat or deadlifting days, but they've trained their body so well. They're so well connected. They have an incredible amplifier. All they need is to plug in some speakers and they're going to get tremendous benefits from it. Yeah. And for some reason, you know, that concept is hard sometimes to, for people to grasp right away of, of like, you can, squeeze harder. Uh, just think of it as like, if I'm going to grab an object that's lighter versus heavier and, and what that all entails, like if I'm going to pick it up, uh, and just use the same amount of contraction to pick it up as I would, you know, the heavier object, you're gonna have to squeeze harder. You have to try harder. You have to recruit, you know, all the way up your arm into your hips and stabilize with your legs. Like a heavy object, you know, requires 
more force production. So you have to be able to generate, you know, more muscle fibers. You have to recruit more, uh, you know, to be able to pull that off. So you're just sort of simulating that, um, you know, on your own. So it, it, you just have to get in that mindset. Like I need to squeeze and I need to really, you know, bear down. And, uh, you, and that's going to then transfer to when you do have heavier loads and things to, you know, account for. Next question is from Stones and Lead. How can you tell the difference between fatigue and tiredness? When should or shouldn't you try to push through it? This is a good question because it's a hard one to explain, but I will say this. This might help. Rarely does, rarely is the answer not movement. Sometimes it is, but rarely is that the answer. Now, the kind of movement you do, this is where there's a big difference. So what I do if I feel fatigued or tired, rarely will I not do a workout. But what I will do is I'll start and I'll go very easy and very light. And if it's just me being unmotivated, usually what happens is I start to feel more energy and I start to feel better. And then I start to ramp up my workout. If I'm actually tired and my body's like literally like really fatigued in a real way, the light workout, I can tell. I do the light workout, I'm moving, or I'm just going for a walk. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely tired. I'm going to keep it very easy. And it's not bad for you. It's actually quite recuperative. Now, if it's the kind of tiredness or fatigue that you need to not work out, usually you feel almost ill. That's that's my experience where you're like, oh man, I don't, I have a headache. I really don't feel good. I need to go to bed. But usually any movement, so long as it's appropriate, is it's probably a good idea. Do you guys remember the conversation that we had with uh, Dr. Andy Galpin around this? I was, that, oh, optimizing, that, versus, optimizing versus Yeah, adapting. and that stuck with me, and, and it reminds me of like this question right now. And one of the th points that he was making was that there's also benefits to being tired and exhausted and pushing the body still occasionally. So I think the answer to me for this question is – if this is a, a, a once in a while thing, I think there's actually lots of benefits to, you know, oh man, I didn't sleep very well. I'm a little tired. Whatever that, I'm going to push through and still get after it that every once in a while. If this is a consistent thing that's yeah. reoccurring where you're not getting a lot of sleep almost every night and you're constantly yeah. pushing the then body you're just in the gym. your tires. That's right. Yeah. So I, I think if this is like a, a one off where it's just like, man, just today I just don't feel like it. Like there's I think there's tremendous value in pushing through that. But if this is you are consistently tired mm -hmm. and feeling fatigued going into workouts, then you probably need to look at your sleep, your diet, yeah. stress, and other factors in your life. So that's kind of how I try and look at it now is that if this is something that's yeah, considered a repeat offender, right. Yeah, versus just, just yeah. one time, because I think I want to be careful. Uh, I, or before we had that conversation with, uh, Andy Galpin, I, I kind of had more the, the, I think the point Sal's coming from, which is, Hey, nothing, just take it back off a little bit. But then you tell that to a client that is already unmotivated to train and work mm -hmm. out. And it's kind of like giving them the past that, Oh, you feel tired today. Don't don't worry about pushing hard. So then they they never stretch their capacity because they got the they got yeah. the okay from their trainer that hey, if you feel a little tired, nothing wrong with like taking it easy. So it really depends on who I'm talking to on if they would have value with pushing. Now, taking the opposite example, somebody who is addicted to the gym, they train seven days a week, they're always getting after it, and then they have a day like that, I'm going to lean more towards what Sal is saying, which is, hey, like, back off, take it easy, like, you're, you're consistent as hell, you train hard all the time, your body's obviously telling you you're not feeling well right now or that, doesn't hurt to bring up, uh, drop the intensity. But if it's somebody who has a hard time being even consistent in the gym and they're always looking for an excuse of why they shouldn't lift or why they shouldn't push their body, it probably, there's probably more value in them pushing through. Yeah, I've seen both. Both scenarios, and that's a good point to bring up because it's um, you. Sometimes you have to talk some of uh, your your fanatical gym people off a cliff and be like, "You need to address this. Like, this is a signal of the body that's telling you, uh, you, you know, you're either not getting enough sleep or, or you know recovering properly, which means like you're really not pushing forward. You're not adapting. You're you're just uh, you know healing and then you know trying to to um, you know keep going in just survival mode." Uh, versus, yeah, like uh, the majority of clients though that we had were uh, the, the biggest issue was frequency. It was just to get them in and to just keep going and to know that they could, uh, they have another operating system even when they aren't feeling up to it that they can pull from. So, 
Yeah, it, it really does depend on, yeah, now, on the individual. Adam, uh, because you're, you're you're right now experiencing some kind of lingering, right? It's like two and a half weeks past. I'm not better. training. Right, but you're, are you also not moving, or are you doing? Uh, I mean, I move, I, I move a little bit, but to be honest with you, I mean, it's so I'm so fatigued and so tired that it. I mean, I was playing uh, with the, my, we have like a little Fisher Price basketball hoop in our house, with, and I was playing with Max. You just dunking on him? Yeah, just, yeah, <laughs> playing just around, swatting, like twenty every minutes, attempt. literally, and yeah. then I like right after fell on the beanbag, passed out, snoring at like three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So. I'm really like I'm definitely feeling the effects of the, the long COVID they call it right. So uh, and I'm not and I'm not worried about. It. I'm not training like so I sh I want to you know I told Katrina last night man I really want to get in and maybe I'll do a little lift tomorrow. But I'm so I'm so feeling under the weather that I'm not even thinking about pushing my body right now. In fact, I'm more concerned that doing that may send me backwards. Right. And I'm not and I know I'm losing muscle. I know I'm getting weaker. Like I know that I'm very aware of that. But I'm I'm not allowing that to be my driver of my decision on should I lift or train today or not. And so, you know, for me, going to the grocery store or walking around the block for 15 minutes is is strenuous enough that it's putting me in, knocking me out. So thinking that if I go get under a barbell and start squatting, even at 30% intensity still is too probably much. too much for me. So next question is from C Greenwood 32. How do you program a balance between performance and aesthetics? Uh, you know, it's funny. We get a question like this <laughs> every week, every yeah. single week, right? Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing for most people, what I'm going to say is for the average person focus on performance. And here's why focusing on performance is going to give you a great deal of aesthetics and performance is more of an objective measure. So you either get stronger or you don't, you either gain more stamina or you don't. Aesthetics, like define aesthetics, define what looks good. You know, it's very, it can be very challenging. You know, it's, it's very like subjective, very subjective, and people really mess with their own heads. Like, you know, someone may lose weight on the scale, but lose a lot of muscle, but because they're smaller, they're happy. Like, no, 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 I, I did a good job. I lost weight, you know, not, not caring about the fact that maybe they lost a lot of muscle because they're so aesthetically driven. In my experience, again, this is the average client. People who are more performance driven to end up with a greater deal of performance and aesthetics than people who are only aesthetics driven. Okay, now there's a caveat here. I think as you become more advanced, you've been training for a while, you're not going to see regular gains in performance. Like, I'm not going to, I don't expect to see regular gains in performance anymore with myself. I've been training for so long. If I gain five pounds on a lift, that's like a big deal, right? It's not like it was when I first started working out. Now I can focus more on aesthetics. I have a good performance base. I have a kind of healthy relationship with exercise. But, you know, the way I would train clients for most of my, well, I'd say for that back half of my career when I got really good at it was I would have them focus on performance and the aesthetics almost always followed. Yeah. If you start with that as the foundation, it's just a healthier mindset that's, you know, more sustainable. Um, and I don't. I, I don't think that it's a bad thing to focus on aesthetics. And I think that, um, it, you know, that's something that can take, uh, you can, you can then go from your, your hyper focus of performance and then build upon that to now enhance areas of your body that you want to, uh, single out. And there's a way that's different to train for that. And it's beneficial to your body to step out of, you know, the performance heavy initiative. Um, but uh, the reverse of that to me is just it's it's a lot uh, it's a lot more challenging when um, the driving force is just how you look, because, again, um, the, the, the psychology of that uh, is, is a lot harder to to step away from. Well, I think. Uh why we get this question so often is because there's more than one way to skin a cat. I think that there's there's more than one way to approach this, you know, and and a lot of that has to depend on what is more of a priority to you or maybe where you're currently at right now or maybe what you've done in the past. Like there's a lot of different factors that may change exactly what the programming looks, but we, for people that want this and don't know, we created a bundle for this. We have a sexy athlete bundle and that's, and basically what it is, is the, it's the combining of maps performance and maps aesthetic together. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've taken a lot of the principles from maps aesthetic. We've taken a lot of the principles 
principles from mass performance. And then we've put them together to show you how we would blend the two of them. But it doesn't mean it's the only way to go about that. Right. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's perfect for every single person, but to give you a really good idea of what programming would look like for somebody who wants to be athletic, but then also cares about how they look. I mean, that's how I would approach it. Yeah. It's just, I, you know, I know when I would, I'm sure you guys experienced this too. When I would train clients, the, you know, the average person works out because of aesthetics. Like the average person doesn't think to themselves, I'm going to squat 300 pounds or I'm going to, you know, uh, have this particular type of performance. They think I want a rounder, butt, I want to be leaner. And what I would do often is I would, for example, I'd have a female client that wants to, you know, build her butt and sculpt her legs and, you know, her back. And I would say, okay, here's what we're going to do. I want you to be able to squat 150 pounds for reps. I want you to be able to deadlift, you know, a couple reps with over 180 pounds. And I want you to be able to hip thrust this much weight. Let's just focus on those. And then let's see what happens. And sure enough, they would take their mind off of their aesthetics. They'd focus on the goals that I gave them. And then they would hit those goals or in the pursuit of those goals, they would gain the aesthetics. Same thing with guys. You know, some guy would hire me and say, I want a bigger chest. I want bigger shoulders, a bigger back. I want to look, you know, more muscular. And I'd say, okay, here's what we're going to focus on. I want you to get to this bench press, this overhead press, this deadlift, this row. Don't focus on your looks and let's just see what happens. And again, sure enough, because their strength went up and they focused on performance, they would gain the aesthetics. Now, of course, at some point, like I said earlier, it, then it makes sense to focus on aesthetics because you're not going to always gain strength or performance linearly. But for most people, if you are if you go to the gym and you haven't been working out for more than a, you know three or four years consistently, you go to the gym and all you're focused on is, can I move better? Am I getting stronger? Can I connect to the exercises you're better? Look better too. You're going to look better. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're just. I mean, think about it this way: if you were fit, strong, and mobile in your performance, how would your body look? Okay. Now imagine if all you cared about were your looks. You didn't care about performance. There's a lot of mistakes you can make. There's so many different mistakes you can make. So many subjective errors that we tend to have. Oh my God, I, I'm a little bloated. Oh, I better you crash know. diets. You know, totally. all these things kind of sneak in. Yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm like a, I tell people to typically focus on performance and the aesthetics will follow. Now, if you've been training, like I said, if you've been training for a long time, and you know, you're not again, you're not going to get those performance gains like you did when you were first started working out. Then it makes sense. You know, you focus on sculpting and connecting, and you know, you're doing more bodybuilding style workouts because at some point, if you always push performance, injury rates tend to go up and all that stuff. So. Uh, you know, so I, I still stand by that. I think it's it's a good idea for most people to focus on performance because the, the aesthetics typically uh, will follow. Look, if you like our information, if you like the podcast, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. Head over there, check out all of our guides. They'll help you build muscle, burn body fat, get a better squat or get a more sculpted midsection, be a better personal trainer. Bunch of guides. They're all totally free. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram, okay? So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.